This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. So our next talk is by Nate Zupan. It's, it's called Optimize Thyself. And he started by optimizing away all the problems that might occur with slides because he doesn't use any. Yeah. Please give a hand, big hand to Mike. Hi, uh, I'm a Python developer for Slovenia, been a Python developer for 10 years, and this is not a talk about Python. Um, so what, what's the best part about a conference? Anyone? Sprints? Yeah? Food? Talks? Accommodation. Uh, for me, it's the whole hallway track. It means like the discussions you have in the hallway. And uh, you know, I was in Boston last week on a, plum, on a annual Plum conference, and I was also giving a talk, and I was trying I was thinking how to make my talk more as a hallway discussion, and I realized when you have a discussion in the hallway, nobody will pull out the laptop and start presenting slides. You know, you, you, you discuss things, and it's a two-way uh, uh, exchange of information. So, uh, this is my uh, experiment of uh, trying to do a hallway uh, discussion in a in a in a slot of one talk. So, no slides. Um, yeah. So, recently there was a study about how, how how much uh, time uh, guys do chores uh, in different European countries. Slovenians were the first, we do the most chores in Europe. I'm not sure if this is a good or a bad thing, I guess it's a good thing. Uh, and there, there was numbers, 23 hours per week we do chores. And I was thinking 23 hours per week, that's like half of, half of the amount of like, work hours you have every week. Could this be spent in a more meaningful, meaningful way? I, I mean, at least some of those hours if, if you talk to your spouse or your kids, like, that's very meaningful time to spend while doing chores, but like, if you're just you know, mowing the lawn and you do that for two hours uh, every week, could you do something else? Uh, and I started listening to podcasts. Anyone else listens to podcasts? Yeah, podcasts are great. What's your favorite podcast? Yeah? I like, I like, I like Floss Weekly. Floss Weekly is a podcast about free libre open source software. Uh, every week, uh, the host will bring on a, uh, an author of open, open source library, framework, uh, server, whatever, project. And then while you're doing your chore, uh, you actually get to know a new software. So this, this is uh, the first little trick, you know, maybe uh, think about uh, the time you spend maybe traveling, doing stuff where you could listen to podcasts and learn new things. Um, well, but why I brought up Floss Weekly is uh, at the end of every episode there are two questions that everybody's eagerly awaiting for. What's the first one? What's your favorite scripting language? And everybody goes like, oh, I hope it's going to say Python. And most people say Python, of course. Uh, the second one is, what's your favorite code editor? And then the whole flame war uh, ensues between Vim and Emacs users and Sublime and PyCharm and, I don't know, Notepad++, I guess. Not really. Um, <laughs> Uh, and my point being is, uh, we as developers, we uh, give a lot of focus and energy and time into making sure our development environments, our editors, are set up in the perfect way. But we don't really uh, give as much attention to the working environment around us and to the working environment inside us. Um, not completely true, though. We do have one thing that we are really good uh, uh, optimizing. Coffee. Everybody knows like his favorite brand, like or her favorite brand, and how it should be done, and uh, how it should be grind, and you know uh, the amount of it. So you know, I, I would like I would like us as a community to start uh, paying uh, as much attention as we pay to our code editors and on our coffee to also other things that might make us uh, better at what we do and also make our lives better. Um, so yeah. When you think of coffee, what, what else comes to mind? A similar thing? A similar beverage? Tea? Yeah? Anybody uses tea to, stay, to be productive? Yay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, uh, so tea has uh, substances that are also useful, uh, could be useful uh, to, uh, to, increase, to increase your focus. And it turns out, like, so tain and caffeine, it turns out that tea also does not have like, the, the optimal ratio between, between tea and coffee, uh, between tain and caffeine, so um, some people I know actually drink both to make the ratio perfect, 
the thing is, like this ratio is not like a constant. You have to actually uh, learn what it is for you. And uh, for anyone that has an, uh, done any performance optimization at one point in your life, what's the first rule of performance optimization? Measure, Measure. exactly. So whatever you do uh, with like this, uh, th this kind of uh, optimizations outside of your computer, you have to measure. If you don't measure, you're not going to come anywhere. So like if you're, if you're trying to find the, the best ratio of taine and caffeine for you, make sure you measure. How do you measure? It's difficult. You know, with, with code, it's, it's, it's precise. You always have, you know, there's a millisecond there, a millisecond there, or a megabyte, or a kilobyte. Uh, with measuring yourself, it's going to be subjective, and it's going to take uh, more time. But it's still better than non-measuring. And you measure by writing uh, a journal. Uh, I'm going to come back to journaling later. Um, so what else can we have besides uh, coffee and tea? Did anyone try any of the you know, cognitive enhancing drugs, legal, <laughs> gray legal, illegal? There, there's, been a, there, there's been a huge surge in the usage of these, especially in the States in the last years. And the, People have also tried psilocybin, which is the substance that's in uh, uh, magic mushrooms. Uh, but like just microdosing it, so it, you, you don't go on a trip, but you kind of have a better creative output, I guess. I haven't tried. If someone did, I want to talk to you. Please find me later. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Exactly. Uh, so if you're, if you're feeling uh, if, like you want to experiment in that area, there's a great podcast called uh, Smart Drugs, Drug Smarts where a software developer tries one of these things every week and then reports how it goes. It, it's not, not just the drugs, but mostly drugs, yeah. Um, but uh, he, he, um, sort of on the gray, gray area of legality. But it, it's, a, it's, it's fun to listen, you know, while you're cleaning the dishes or whatever. Um, and then, so we've taken, so we've covered the, the, you know, the supplements, the tea, the, the caffeine, tain, and the, more of artificial ones, or non-artificial ones. So psilocybin is actually a naturally pre pre present uh, substance. Um, there, there was a really cool study that I read uh, a few months back called uh, Physiology of Willpower. And it addresses the, uh, the, the, the fluctuations of your blood sugar level to the willpower. So they found out if, if, if you starve and then you eat too much, and then you starve and then you eat too much, and you starve and then you eat too much, you have uh, huge spikes in your blood sugar level, and that will just kill your willpower. You will not be able to, uh, to make good decisions uh, when you're spiking, you know. Will, um, so this, uh, they, they suge the researchers suggested to, like, when you work, you, you, you uh, try to make uh, your um, glucose uh, blood level as flat as possible. How do you do that? A lot of small, a lot of small um, breaks, a lot of small snacks, which could be... And if you're snacking on, on, on sugars, not really beneficial, so it will take time to create uh, a lot of healthy snacks. Uh, so there's a hack for that that's called Soylent. Anybody heard of Soylent yet? Cool. So Soylent was another thing created by a software developer. <laughs> uh, so yeah, mostly I use uh, solutions by engineers. So it's a, it's a powdered shake that contains uh, basically 100% of your daily needs. So the guy basically downloaded the, you know, the FDA spreadsheet of you need to have this amount of this every day and this amount of that every day, and he created a shake that has 100% of everything. So all the fats, uh, proteins, uh, sugars, vitamins, minerals, everything is in there. Uh, it's not great to drink, <laughs> but you know, when, I, when I know I have, I have a deadline to catch and I'm going to be working for the entire day, I prepare it in the morning. Mm, and then I will just sip it throughout the day. Just like don't drink it in, in one sipping, but like have like a sip every couple of minutes, and that will make me not go hungry for several hours, and like my blood sugar will be flat as a pancake, and I can uh, focus on working and not uh, silencing my uh, you know stomach. Mm. And then obviously there's hydration. I mean there's research after research after research. Uh, proving that if you are not well hydrated, if you don't drink enough water, you just cannot perform uh, your absolute best. Okay, how are we with time? Yeah, a little more than 10 minutes. Perfect. Any questions at this point? Did you try going without caffeine at all? Yes, I am, I'm actually not drinking coffee at all. I noticed that for myself, when I set out like three weeks, no caffeine, mm. everything was much better. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, again? With sports. Okay, so uh, I need to re- repeat the question first. So if I try it uh, without caffeine, yeah, I don't drink coffee. I drink it like maybe once a week, maybe. Uh, so and if I tried sports to get in the flow, uh, yes, I'm uh, addicted to uh, everything related to surfing, windsurfing, stand-up paddle surfing. So uh, I try to go on the water twice a week, and that is my uh, creative uh, time when I have time for my own to think. And the best ideas and the best uh, bug fixes I have got while I was windsurfing. So sports hel- helped me a lot. Yeah. Have I looked into a ketogenic diet? Yes, I did. I haven't tried it yet. Um, and I'm very interested to try. So ketosis, um, so we actually have two, two mechanisms of, of, uh, of providing energy to your cells. One is the sugar and the, one, the other is fat. And apparently, if you use fat to provide uh, energy to your uh, cells, you are you know, much more focused. La, 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 la. Read it up. You know how to use Google. It's called ketosis, uh, ketogenic diet. Basically, uh, in the morning, with, with, uh, uh, instead of eating, you uh, uh, consume fat. Um, and that makes you great. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> True. Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently it's really, really hard because it costs to get to think which nutrients are contained, which food. Oh my god, can I eat this? Can I eat this? Yeah. What can I eat? I have to wait till yeah. 4 o'clock to eat. What do I do? Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's intermit- intermittent fasting as well, combined yeah, with yeah, ketogenic yeah, diet. Yes. Yeah. It's hard. I, I'm planning to try it at some point, but I haven't gotten <laughs> yeah, that. It, hmm? it works. Hmm? It works. You just have to stay below the pressure. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Testament. Have you tried it yet? Oh, cool. Okay, I need to talk to you then. <laughs> um, but up until now, I was, I was talking about how to be as efficient as possible, you know? So, but that's not really what we're aiming for here. We're aiming to have the most optimal, the, the best output, the, the, the highest amount of output that we get. And that's by being effective, not efficient. You can be the most efficient uh, email responder, but that will not bring value to your company or to your project, probably. You can be the most efficient a uh, tree cutter, but if, if there's some patch of land that already has no trees, you can just you know use that. And how, how to be how, how to be effective is actually the question you need to ask yourself. Um, and I'm going to start with: uh, are, are tests important? Yes. Is documentation important? Why don't we write it? Okay. Why don't we write tests? I know like a lot of packages are missing tests. Like why is it? Like we need willpower. Like we need to ha- make good decisions. You know, there are a ton of surgeons who smoke. Uh, you would think that after 15 years of looking at pictures of you know, uh, uh, lungs after years and years of smoking, none of the doctors would smoke or be obese uh, or you know, overweight or you know, drink uh, sugary drinks, but they still do. Like who wants to die healthy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, we are still humans, unfortunately, we're not machines, and we're very irrational. Uh, I, I would uh, encourage you to, uh, to read uh, books by uh, Dan uh, Ariely, who is a you know, great guy who is researching uh, how irrational we are. Um, I'm not going to go into details because we don't have time, but we are hugely irrational. Uh, just one aspect of it, uh, it's called uh, decision fatigue. It turns out we can uh, do about, like, let's say, 20 good decisions every day. And if you spend like five of those, even before you come to the office, you know, you only have 15 left instead of 20. And then you spend five more in the first five minutes in the office, and then you have only 10 left. And then once you come to the decision of, I should really write a test for this, or, like, I should really write the computation, you're, out of, you're just out of your good decisions and you spiral out of control, and there's no tests, and there's no documentation, everything falls uh, into uh, an abyss. Uh, so one trick you can try is uh, for like 10 days, again, measure, you know, right, how, 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 how it feels. Uh, for 10 days, try to have the same breakfast every day, and try to, uh, or even better, prepare the breakfast in the evening, and prepare your clothes in the evening. So in the morning, you save two decisions. 
Okay, or maybe even you know decide how you're going to go uh, if you're if you're using different uh, modes of transport to the office. Decide the previous evening. Try to do as much preparation the previous evening, so in the morning you don't have to do decisions. But you're already out of decisions yeah. in the evening, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but these are small ones. The small ones is easier to kind of still do right. Um, but uh, if you spend them in the morning, then it's, you're done. <laughs> That this worked miracles for me. I was surprised. A lot of these things are so like, come on, really? No, we're engineers. This is just some mumbo jumbo. But you know, try it out for 10 days. 10 days is not a long period of time. If it works, fine. If it not, you know, that's the, this is how we move on. Like, if you don't experiment, if you don't do mistakes, you're stagnating. Mm. Then the other one I would like to stress is overworking, which is hugely present in our uh, in our culture. Um, there's, uh, there is a fantastic uh, study from Stanford uh, that proved that every hour you work after 50 hours per week, is your productivity will just plummet. And actually, if you work 70 hours, your output is equal if you, is, as if you would work 55 hours. And this is, a Stanford, this is a study that has been conducted over you know, a ton of people from different backgrounds and different uh, professions, and nobody has debunked it yet. And like one more proof, uh, have, can you uh, come up with uh, some of the prof uh, a profession that you know potentially, if things go wrong, their human life is at stake, such as you know bus drivers, pilots, doctors. doctors. They have very hard limits on how much they can work every week or every month or every day. Well, they get ignored by the health system. Yeah, for doctors, yeah. <laughs> but you know, pilots are re they really have strict strict limits and. Because we have learned that if, if you work too much, you will make mistakes, and then, well, you know, then you will have to work even more, and then it, you will run out of uh, uh, good decisions, and you know, just <laughs> huge spiral. Um, it's hard to get out of the overworking um, um, abyss. It's a, drug. Hmm? it's a drug. It's a drug. It is a drug, yeah. Uh, and I don't have nearly enough time to start uh, talking about. Uh, uh, approaches because I used to work like 300 hours per month and now I do like 100, 120. Um, but you know, there's a ton of resources, resources on the internet. Uh, you're smart, you'll find it. I just want to uh, give you the uh, like, you know, inception of an idea that this is maybe not, such, like, this is maybe a drug that is uh, like self, um, yeah, just meant for itself. Mm. And lastly, a quote from Lincoln. Lincoln. Uh, if you would ask, if you, if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I would spend the first four sharpening the axe. So we're good, you know, we sharpen our computers, they're pretty sharp, uh, but sharpening the mind is also something that uh, I think we should all collectively do. Uh, two great approaches, uh, meditation and journaling. I've, has, does anyone meditate regularly? All right, I'm trying to. Uh, I've been using this great uh, app called Headspace, uh, which uh, basically it's a guided meditation. So for 10 minutes every day, they will guide you into uh, trying to learn how to meditate. Uh, they have like a 10-day uh, like trial, so you can f try it for 10 days. Again, try it for 10 days, see if it works. The other thing that I like a lot is uh, journaling. Uh, personally, I use the, the five-minute journal. It's like, it's like a book, and it has the first 20 pages are about you know why why to journal uh, like uh, the links to re re references to literature and to uh, research on how to journal to be effective, and then you have each page you have uh, for for a single day, and in the morning, basically if you even if you've got on the uh, wrong side of the bed, or you've had a lousy day last day, you write three things that you're grateful for, such as you know um, I'm in a warm bed or I have a family I'm I was born in the right century so I can be a a developer and not, you know, a physical worker or just something. And that will kind of put you into a good mood to start off the day. And then you write three things that you need, that you want to achieve that day. And you will have those three things in your mind uh, the entire day. And there is a high chance that you will actually succeed in doing them. And then in the evening, uh, you kind of do a review uh, of the day and you see what could be better. So again, you write down three amazing things that happened during the day. So even if, even if you had a lousy day, you remember the three great things, like I really had a good coffee, or uh, I met uh, an old friend and we had a nice discussion. And that will 
calm the mind, it will, it will help you go to sleep. And then lastly, you write uh, two things uh, that you ca could have made uh, to make today uh, greater. And that, is, uh, that encourages you to do kind of a self-inspection on uh, you know, your behaviors, uh, your patterns. Uh, and then at that point, I normally also shuffle back a few pages to see if there's something that I'm trying out works for me or not. Uh, and yeah, I think I will need to wrap up uh, so we can have more questions. Yep. Uh, do you suggest writing journaling with a pen or is it okay to write on a computer? Uh, so if I suggest write journaling with a pen or on a computer, um, I'm writing with a pen uh, because you know, people have suggested the five minute journal, which is a book. So you, know, you can't really write with, uh, with a pen, but they do have an app. Uh, the thing is that I wanted to dis distance myself from the computer because I tried with apps and then when I, once I opened the computer to start writing a journal, I would see emails pop up and this is like two hours later, uh-uh. <laughs> They call it the, the windshield for the mind. Uh, sorry, windscreen wiper, sorry. So it, you, just, you just do like in the morning and then you have laser focus. Yeah, um, how does uh, getting out of the focus zone uh, mix with all of that, what you said? Okay, so how, how does uh, getting what out... What means? Yeah, yeah. Does anything have to do with yeah. it? So comfort zone and all, the, and all and this topic. Everything that I mentioned today is getting out of your comfort zone. I, at least it did for me because I consider myself a you know, scientific engin engineer and a lot of this kind of felt like stupid. Um, so it was like for me sitting down and writing about my feelings on a piece of paper is just immensely difficult. So it was definitely stepping out of my comfort zone but I'm happy I did it. Uh, did we had another question there? Yeah. Okay, so if, any ha if anyone had experience with Pomodoro technique, yeah. a couple of guys, yeah, I, I, I'm also, that is also on my, one of my to-do lists to, you know. I would also recommend Fox at Will, uh, because in my case it was much better than Pomodoro mm -hmm. when you can listen to the yeah. music. Mm -hmm. Again, it's like different techniques work for different people. Try it for 10 days, see what it, if it works or not. Okay, can you say again, Focus at Will. Focus at Will is another. Cool. We had more? Yep. What, two things. The, the one thing, like, uh, because it was mentioned that you can also throw it away after you write down. Mm -hmm. I would disprove a bit because there's another very positive effect if you also read positive stuff you wrote to yourself. Like, if the way, like, make some of you know about neural networks, how they work. Positive feedback loop. So um, if you often read positive stuff, you wrote your, uh, yourself, you get, uh, get mm. positive feedback and will be uh, uh, more positive, will have more positive uh, uh, base. One of the techniques that I also tried that worked great was, uh, it's called an awesome jar, awesomeness jar. So every time something great happens to you, write it on a piece of paper and throw it in a jar. And when you feel like crap, Take a paper out and you're like, oh yeah, that was fun. <laughs> it's like, it's so simple and when I, at first try, I was like, this is, this is just not going to work. So uh, the question was how to uh, manage stress. Yeah. Stress, stress is a lot about anxiety. So anxiety is uh, fear of the future, basically. Um, and a lot of, 
So why why I also don't uh, like keeping away from coffee is because coffee really increases anxiety, and anxiety is uh, you know causes stress. So if you're if if you feel stressful, that maybe try you know being without coffee for you, you said it worked. Mm -hmm. So when I dropped coffee for a week or two, I suddenly noticed that it was gone. Yeah. Like, just yeah. because physiology was uh, yeah. better. Uh, the other thing is, like I said, journaling in the morning will, 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 uh, will like, eliminate at least some of that anxiety away. Because um, you will have, like, because you write down the things that you want to achieve, you really have laser focus and clear mind, and you, and you do that. I mean, it's a process, it's, it, and it's never finished. And, and there's a ton of resources out there. You know, there's a ton of research. Happily, uh, another great, uh, it's actually a YouTube channel called uh, Healthcare Triage, where it's a, it's a, a medical doctor reviews different, um, different uh, research and then kind of summarizes it. And it, you have it on topics such as you know, hydration, tea, coffee, um, you know, standing and, or versus sitting, stuff like that. And it's great. It's like 10 minute chunks of knowledge distilled from a ton of research. Uh, it's called again uh, the healthcare triad, triage. Um, th th there's also something that's a problem is that uh, currently many replicating studies are showing that uh, things that have been shown proven in the last 10, 20, 30 years are actually not that valid. I mean, there's stuff like overhydration, for example. Yes. It's actually being called out that more than a liter or two is all, that, that's fine already. So more than like four liters or something is yes. like the optimum. Yeah. Um, and also psychological issues are actually being not replicated like on a mass scale right now. Yeah. So I would be very, very careful to go for like broad stroke, oh, this has been proven, there's, there's a lot of movement in One the of the most popular uh, episodes of this healthcare triage guy is actually, you're probably not uh, dehydrated, where he disproves, he finds uh, recent research that disproves 20, 20 or 30 years of recent. So it's, it's, I would suggest uh, looking him up. There was another one somewhere here? Yeah, well, that's one of that. Uh, with stress, I actually watched uh, Ben uh, yeah. on stress, and the doctor said in the end she had some patients uh, which uh, saw stress as a positive reaction of the body and had definitely um, a much healthier lives, even if they were stressed. Yeah. It has to do with the way you think about how you're feeling. Is that what you say about brain damage? Like yeah, 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 thing? exactly. Yeah. Uh, in the back? Yeah, uh, just, just a note on that. It's uh, one of the most common things I hear people actually in the States. Stress is not necessarily a negative thing. Because there's different kinds of stress. Yes. For example, if you work out really hard, it's also a kind of stress in your body. Your mind is going to Actually, de stresses you because it relaxes you. Mm. So there's, a, there's actually a really interesting talk on TED Talks, I think, on that as well. So yeah, there's, like I said, there's a ton of, uh, ton of uh, stuff out there. But like 90% of Productivity talk, or 99% of talk, productivity talks and conferences is about how to tweak your editor. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, we're missing like a huge amount of benefit we can gain here. You know, theory of constraints. Uh, you, know, you have to uh, locate the bottleneck. And I think like we have completely optimized our working environments and we are missing the big no bottleneck, which is you know, our environments and our minds uh, to, to be better developers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe something to add, which had a like, huge impact on my just how my days went and how productive they were, is not a not doing email first thing in the morning and also turning off notifications. Like essentially trying to change as many processes from like push based, yes. pull based, or, yes. or I fetch my email when I want it and then read it instead of like oh there's a bug report, oh there's this. Yeah. And, and yeah, that just had a huge impact. Yeah. Yeah. Just to uh, uh, repeat, yeah. Make sure you do, you do pull-based things, not push-based. So the turn off email, uh, auto-sync and notifications. Check your emails twice a day, not you know, all the time. But yeah, there's a, a, yeah. There's, you can read a ton of, uh, about this when, when you start looking. Mm -hmm. like free time, mm -hmm. they were considered to 
relatively well off mm-hmm. and rich. Mm-hmm. And now it's the opposite. People mm-hmm. who are busy, more busy, they're considered to be well off. Um, so, I think we kind of have a reverse trend in the last years, I hope. I mean, I, know, I certainly know a lot of successful people that are, their main goal is to have as much leisure time as possible and they, they define success by having enough leisure time. And like, uh, I also applied it to myself. I, you know, if I work more than like a little over 100, like 120 hours uh, a month, something has been going wrong. I, I'm, I'm trying to reflect and find what the issue was. Um, Mm-hmm. which helped me like organize my day throughout the day and leveling up while I'm like cleaning my apartment and stuff. Yeah. And I was like my apartment was always dirty like my whole life because I was always too lazy. And this helped me actually clean my apartment and now I feel so much better just going home and I feel just free basically. Mm. And yeah, this might also help. Okay, so a gamification app to make your yes. um more disciplined? Sorry, more disciplined? Habitica. habitica. Yes. Okay, cool. How are we with time? We have time for one last question. One last question? Yeah. It's not a question, but also addition to your thing. Uh, I have a course that I passed on, and the main, main goal of this course is you need to finish your unfinished task. Because normally we have like 100 unfinished tasks. Like clean mm. the sink, like uh, remove that one, mm. etc. Yeah, yeah. And by doing just one, at least one task, you just list them all and doing one after the other, clean up your life a lot. Yeah. And it gives you more energy for doing your job. Also. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> let's continue this uh, yeah, hallway is, discussion in the hallway. A, <laughs> there is a coffee break coming up right now. Yeah. You know this gentleman? Approach him and yeah. talk to him to your heart's delight. But not too long because at 10 past uh, 5 we have lightning sessions. Yeah, upstairs.